The story of Stalker has always been one shrouded in mystery. From the fictional scientific novel, Roadside Picnic, written about extraterrestrials visiting the planet Earth for only a short time, leaving behind these deadly, yet enticingly valuable anomalies, to the very real events of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, it makes a story like this incredibly unique, and you must let me explain why. Now there's a concept that I remember hearing about long ago, I don't remember from who or when exactly this was, but it went something like, storytelling in the last century has basically almost repeated itself over and over again in almost every single story that we hear about today. And this is especially true in pop culture, with video games, movies, and so many things alike. Now the storytelling concept I'm referring to is called the Rebellion Against Oppression Archetype, which essentially boils down to a large oppressive force, such as an army or a government, and a hero brave enough to stand against this force and to defy them at any means necessary, and ultimately prevent Prevailing, resulting in a great epic of good versus evil. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this type of storytelling, it's resulted in some of humanity's greatest stories, anything from Star Wars to ideas that have influenced humanity more than any other type of story has ever in the past, such as ones from the Bible. It has become completely modernized in the last century from World War II due to the globe's united fight against Nazism. Because these types of stories have been so incredibly cultural defining throughout humanity, it leads us to a very deep concept, and the one I'll be referring to specifically is the concept of narrative tropes and archetypes. Essentially, we're repeating ourselves over and over again in every story we tell. Now because you sat here and let me explain what I've needed to, I won't go on any more about how Star Wars and Nazism relate. What I will talk about is why you clicked on this video in the first place, and that's how Stalker completely flies off the rails when it comes to this sort of narrative, and defines its in its own type of story, reflecting one not of a hero that defeats an oppressor, but one of free standing and free thinking, one of convoluted moral decisions fueled by a far more human desire of adventure, curiosity, greed, survival, and a feeling of true free will, but more importantly, the world that this narrative takes place inside of, and why the type of world building I am about to describe has been so popular amongst stalker fans around the globe for so long. For anybody not familiar with where this story originally came from, I'll do a really quick summary of the details that I think are important about what we're talking about today, and where it all started. Roadside Picnic is a philosophical science fiction novel written by Soviet Russian authors Arkady and Boris Stragatsy in 1971. I'm very sorry if I pronounced that terribly wrong. To summarize what the book was about, it was set in the aftermath of an extraterrestrial event called the Visitation that took place in several locations around the planet Earth, in rural unpopulated areas over the period of two days where local populations and the extraterrestrials themselves never made contact. The title of the novel derives from an analogy proposed by the character Dr. Valentine Pillman who compares the visitation to a picnic. It goes something like this. A picnic, picture a forest, a country road, a meadow. Cars drive off the country road into the meadow. A group of young people get out carrying bottles, baskets of food, transistor radios, and cameras. They light fires, pitch tents, turn on the music. In the morning, they leave. The animals, the birds, the insects that watched in horror through the long night creep out from their hiding places. And what do they see? Old spark plugs and old filters strewn about, rags burnt out bulbs, and the monkey wrench left behind, and of course, the usual mess. Apple cores, candy wrappers, charred remains of the campfires, cans, bottles, somebody's handkerchief, somebody's pen knife, torn newspaper, coins, faded flowers picked in another meadow. In this analogy, the nervous animals are the humans, who venture forth after the visitors have left, discovering items and anomalies that are ordinary to those who have discarded them, but incomprehensible or deadly to the animals or the earthlings in this case. The analogy is important because it implies that the visitors may not have paid any attention to or even noticed the human inhabitants of the planet during their visit. For me, this brings solace to the mystery of why the anomalies are even there in the first place. It just might be something that whoever left them there wasn't even mindful of it. And because we'll never know the mystery of who actually did leave them there, we shouldn't be so curious as to why it was left there. Our interests should only lay in what the artifacts can do for us, 
and what kind of value they can bring. And this brings me to describing the stalkers. The stalkers in the book were a common nickname for men who engaged in the illegal enterprise of prospecting and smuggling alien artifacts out of the zone. Now because these zones were apparently so dangerous and anomalous and had such unexplainable events happening within them, they were quartered off by the military, by the governments, and of course they would. Why wouldn't they? Um, aliens visited the world and left behind these dangerous anomalous events. I like to think the government was trying to take control of the zones and study the anomalies and the artifacts for themselves, of course to maybe gain some sort of technological advantage over their international neighbors. Now it's obvious that the communities who lived near the zones knew about the artifacts and what they could do, sparking great interest in these artifacts, thus the stalkers. Now the nickname stalker from the book was more meant to describe somebody who stalks and creeps and obsesses, obsesses about the zone, obsesses about the value that they can get from the zone and from the artifacts that they can scavenge. But in the video game it's actually an acronym and I love this acronym because it truly does describe the convoluted moral decisions that stalkers have to make and it goes something like this uh, the acronym s-t-a-l-k-e-r scavengers trespassers adventurers loners killers explorers and robbers they scavenge for things they need to survive they trespass into the zone they adventure the zone they're loners because typically there's not any honor amongst thieves they're killers because they have to kill to survive they have to kill against the polarizing factions within the zone they explore the ever-changing landscape of the anomalies and they rob for artifacts maybe things they need to survive maybe they rob the artifacts from other stalkers who knows, the story is all yours. The location that this visitation took place in the book is in a fictional town in Canada, where I'm from. But of course we're not talking about Canada here. We're talking about Pripyat in Ukraine. And this brings me to the whole point of the video that I'm trying to make, and why the story of Stalker is so unique. The Chernobyl disaster was something that really did happen. It was considered one of the worst nuclear disasters in human history. It involved over 500,000 personnel to clean up and an estimated 18 billion rubles, roughly 68 billion dollars US, you know, adjusted for inflation these days. It was an event that happened in 1986 and caused the evacuation of the entire city of Pripyat and is even a complete ghost city up until today, 50 years later. But this visitation event happens in 2006 within the area of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, 20 years later after the actual real event of the Chernobyl disaster. Now a big part of the reason of why Stalker's story is so special is because it combines this very unique good science fiction story with this very real interesting event that actually happened. Combining these two incredible stories, one being a fictional event mixed with a non-fictional setting, causes a type of world building that no other story could even hold a flame to, and curates a type of immersion that almost feels real when you are involving yourself in the story of Stalker. Even with the incredible storytelling of Escape from Tarkov where you experience the story within the game, within things you see in the game, still does not immerse you as much as the video games of Stalker. In Escape from Tarkov, something happens that causes an event that destabilizes the region and immerses you into their story to try to figure out what happened and how you can escape. One story, one event, and one motive. In Stalker, there are many events, many things that had to happen to build the story and the mysteries that you're involving yourself in. It is uncertain why you end up in the zone in the first place. Is it to find artifacts, to become rich? Is it to align yourself with a faction? to help the zone, to help the creatures within it, and to preserve the unique anomalies. Are you there to destroy the zone? Do you see it as an abomination, the horrible mutations, and the laws against nature? Is it to join yet another faction, to worship the visitors that had landed there in hopes that they'll return someday? Whatever it is, the story is yours. In a beautiful world crafted by real events and an award-winning science fiction novel, I think this is the best world-building story I have ever seen. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I think Stalker's story is so special. Thanks for listening.